Right, hello painters and decorators of the interweb, Phil Beckwith, the professional painter and decorator, back with a very, very interesting feature. How to paint a roll top cast iron bath. I'm not just on about painting the outside in just an ordinary paint, I'm on about actually doing a fancy marble decorative paint finish effect on it. Now Phil Beckwith has the skills, albeit I've not done one for a, a quite a while because it all comes down to whether it's fashionable or not to paint roll top baths but on this job we're doing we've got a lovely roll top bath with a bit of a boring outside finish. I think somebody over the years because it's an old bath I think somebody over the years has um, just painted it with a oil eggshell well, I can do something about that, and if you look probably there or there, I'll put some photos on of what I've done before. Right, did you see those photos? That's what I've done before. So, how impressive can it look? What I'm going to do, because this is obviously in a few stages, you have to build it up over a few days. Currently, this is just a, an oil base finish on the outside. The inside of the bath has been re-enamelled, the outside has just been painted, it's had some new feet on, so we're going to be doing something to that and addressing these feet. Now the feet, ideally I'd like to do in a bit of a, a chrome finish, so what I'll try and do is get a, a rattle can, you can get some hobby craft sort of um, rattle cans and I'll try and get those to be, oh uh, can you see, a bit like the, the handles. Oh, the handles, the taps, a bit of a chrome finish. But for the outside, what I've done for now, I've washed it down because there was a bit of splash and dirt over it. I've washed it down and all I'm going to do now is give it a light sand with some used wet and dry. And when I mean used wet and dry, I'll go to my pocket. There's some ordinary aluminium oxide paper and there's some wet and dry. Now because I want it fine, this is a 120 grade. I'm just going to rub it against itself which I have done so it's not so gritty that probably halves it so it could be nearly like a 240 finish so what I'm going to do now while the video is rolling really riveting stuff it's not watching paint dry it's watching fill rub down again a bit like watching rubbing down a door very popular video very popular video now we're going to rub down the outside of the bath now it stands to reason, the bath, I can't move it, I can only get to what I can get to. So I'm going to go as far round as I can, because obviously I can't pull the bath out. So I paint round as far as I can, and on this side, I do exactly the same. I paint round as far as I can. Now, I'll give it a bit of a nib down, and then we'll coat it up. So we'll talk about the paint in a moment. But for now, let's just give it a light nib and a dust off. I've already washed it down, so it's all clean. It's just a case of just giving it a key. That's all I'm gonna do. And that is all I really need to do. Now, what's interesting is when this has been painted before, because over the years, these cast iron baths are oh, 50, 60, 70, they're, they're really old, aren't they? What's interesting, there's some runs on it. I'll try and rub those out when I come off camera, but it's got the key on it now, but I'm thinking these are probably historic. They're very, very old and slightly. You're not going to get rid of those because they're that thick and heavy. I don't want to get any mechanical sanders on it because that isn't going to be how I want the finish to be. It's, it is what it is. It's an old cast iron bath. Now what I'm coming to, that's been done with a, a satin finish oil eggshell. The under lip there, obviously they don't paint all the way around. So that's still cast iron, 
it's a ferrous metal it rusts is still a bit raw and when I mean raw it's not got any paint on it so what I'm going to do again when I come off camera I'll just make sure it's nicely rubbed down underneath there and when I paint it I'll go in as far as I can all the way around to the edge just to get it coated up because the paint I'm going to use I'm going to show you for this you want a satiny finish so ideal is in the all coat exterior satin I use it a lot we've used it on previous videos where I've shown you painting cast iron um, fireplaces now because I'm going to be doing this finish marble finish in a water-based product using polyvine and uh, water-based emulsions and um, stainers and bits and pieces like that I want a satin finish to work on a satin finish is lovely to work over a dry finish like a flat eggshell wouldn't be ideal so a satin finish would be ideal and that's what I'm going to use and this because it can go over anything ie a bit of a, a glossy satin eggshell finish that is going to be brilliant and I know it'll work because this is what I've used on lots of things before so if you give it a key, key down that will go on nicely. So I'm going to stop the video. I'm just going to check and dust off because I don't want to bore you with that. Then we'll get to um, the bit of a painting on that. So I'll put my hand over the lens and then we can move on to the next bit. So here I am, back with you again. Sorry about the noise from previously. I was in a, a working um, building site stroke house. You probably hear some more drilling. Right, what I did, I went off camera. I just checked these runs because obviously it is a cast iron bath. So you're gonna get imperfections in the cast. Somebody's oil egg shelled it. I've rubbed them down. You're not gonna get rid of them. And I don't want to be angle grinding them or even murka sanding them off. I've just checked all the underneath edges, dusted it all off and I'm virtually ready to go. As I said before, we put the hand over the um, lens. I had washed it all down. Just bit of washing up liquid in a bucket of water like this just a sponge sponge it all down made it make sure it's all clean so that's I've done that and I've sanded it down I'm quite happy with that now what I'm going to do I've got my brush and you're going to say Phil what brush are you going to use I'm using the eco union brush and this is a two and a half two and a half inch brush this is nice they've got a nice bristle check them out I'm not sponsored by anybody you know I'm not sponsored by anybody because if I was sponsored by anybody I'm surely I'd be wanting a Porsche being sponsored to me one to which I'm not getting so <laughs> we've not got the Porsche yet we've got eco union brushes nice bristle ideal for this sort of application what I'm going to do work from that end all the way around I'll do that top edge underneath there first and bring it all the way around there's nothing too complex about coating this up it's just a case of coating it up with the zins raw coat give a nice coat I mean it's black it'll go for virtually one if it needs another it'll have another but it'll go for one now I don't want anybody picking up on me because I'm one of these that does like to see people working out to paint um, kettles and not tins but this I've got probably half a litre of paint in here if that so I am going to be working out the tin but if you see I don't work from the front work from the back when you're tipping out and that's why it gets white there because people say oh you lose your instructions the instructions on a Zinza coat are all exactly the same what you want to be seeing particularly with any emulsions or paint using you don't want to be losing what color it is so if there's all paint dripping down over the front you're not going to know what the paint is particularly if it goes over the label of what the colour is, particularly with mixed colours. So always work from the back and tip out. So yeah, there's not a lot of paint in there, so I'm just going to work out the tin for ease of application for me. So here we go. I'm going to start down that bottom end. Um, to save you 10 minutes of me painting the bath, when I edit this, I'll speed it up two times, four times, eight times, and we'll do a bit of a Benny Hill. Diddle -a -diddle -a -diddle -a -diddle, all the way through so we'll speed it all up and then once we've done we'll just um, quickly recap again so let's get on with it
So there you go. I've coated up that bath. What a few minutes to do. By the looks of it, can you just see? I'll see if I can zoom you in. By the looks of it, I'm going to say I feel happier if I give it another coat. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wait for that to dry. I'm going to give it another coat. And then um, when we come back, and when you come back on the video, we can start marbling it. Now you're going to say, what colours are you going to use, Phil? Well, it's going to be a fancy marble. We're not trying to match into any marble. And I mean a slab of marble. I've done that on previous baths where we've had to match in. And you've seen on some of the photos, I've had to match in with marble that's actually been in a bathroom. Well, this is a fancy marble, so I've got nothing like that to be matching into. I'm going to do a marble effect, probably black and gold, or even a green, the Verdi, um, Verde Mare, is it? The green marble, maybe. So I think probably go for a black and gold, and black and gold will be slightly yellow in it, give a few veins. But I'll explain that when we come to do it. So for now, I'm going to say, Thanks for watching this first part of the video. It's going to be a bit of a long one, but there's a lot of information to take in on this to get it right. And um, second part, I'll show you the tools I've got for marbling and the products we use, and we'll get on with it. So, thumbs up, like, share, whatever, you know, comments. And I'll see you on the second part, which is all in this video. So, see you in a bit. I'm back, this is part two. No apologies for the long videos. A lot of information to get out to you to show you how to do this. What is it? Hand painting a roll top cast iron bath with a marble effect finish, a fancy marble finish. So if you wanna know how to do this, stay tuned. There'll be a bit of a ad break, breather from me, bit of a cheesy tune, and we'll get back into how we actually do it from painted sides to actually marble finish like this back with you right welcome you're here for part two the actual marbling of the bath now when I left you yesterday because obviously I've given it time to dry I gave it a second coat Zins are all coat exterior, that's covered lovely now. I don't know whether you can just see on camera. Can you see the texture? Well, you've got the texture in the cast, as well as the bad runs, that, uh, what I was telling you about the historic runs. I'm not worried about that, because by the time I've got a marble finish, you're not gonna notice it. And what I didn't want to be doing is sanding it down, because it isn't, it's not like getting a smooth finish like on a, a front door or anything. I, it's not that sort of um, finish we're looking for. It is what it is. It's a cast bath, so it will have the imperfections. So we're here today, I'm gonna to put a marble finish onto there. You're gonna say, Phil, what do you use and what have you got to put a marble finish on there? Well, because you're really interested, I'm gonna show you. So let's get over here. I've got, can you see there, I've got my box of tricks. This is my box of tricks. This is a box, actually my mum's cousin made for me, oh easy 30 years ago, just to house all my decorative paint finish tools, brushes, feathers, bits and pieces. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open it up, show you what's in there quickly, very quickly, of what I'm going to use. But if you're interested in what I've got in this box, and we want to do another video on it. I don't know whether well, I don't know whether I want to do another video on it. But if you are interested in what I have in a box like this, and what we use, all the different bits of sponges, tools, anything that's in there, just put some comments. Give us a like. Smash that bell as well while you're doing the like and subscribing. But if you want to know about what I've got in there, that can be another video. Please say if you'd like to hear about what's in a box like this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna quickly take you off camera, off the stand, and we'll have a quick look in it, and I'll explain what I'm gonna use. So, see in a few. Right, so here we are, it's my box. I hand painted the marble finish on there, just another fancy Sienna marble, you see that? So, got some locks on it, and I've got all my bits and pieces. Now, I've got stuff in here that's, to me, as good as 30 years old. I've got old oh, Ratcliffe colour stains. I've got old um, literature from when I was at college telling you all about graining. That's another thing. 
I've got pictures that my father's gave me over the years with bits and pieces on different effects of marble and this is where you can see what real marbles look like and again I've got I don't know whether you can still get Ratcliffe's um, scumbles and glazers and things like that but these are the old in effect colour cards I've got notes from the old college days now I don't know whether I've told you before I used to do teaching at college and um, back in the day um, it was a really really popular course to do decorative finishes now Mike Myatt was my tutor in the early 90s and I later went on to actually help and um, double staff that class it was a Wednesday evening class because it was so popular and I obviously did my city and girls and passed um, my advanced craft and then went on to teach a training and then obviously teaching and ended up on the decorative finishes um, course teaching that so yeah I mean this is something I really like doing I'm really interested in it and I've got a box of I'll call it a box of tricks now just quickly under here I've got stipplers we've got real natural sponge well, all these get used I've got tack rags now if I just move these quickly again if you're interested in what's in here we can go over it in another video but what I'm going to be using today for graining lining I want to be using feathers so I'm going to get some feathers out I'm going to be using feathers put them over there I won't use a stippler I'll keep this just there but what I do want to be using I'll get that out I want to be using a badger softener so I'll be using a badger softener now this was my father's so I mean you know my dad's 77 now he's still working it was um, downstairs with Brian who works for us some of these are his some of these are what he was given by his um, ex-tutor back from the 50s and I've also one of my um, actual school teachers his father-in-law um, or was it his father he was a painter and decorator and also had an array of these sorts of tools and um, he gave me those just before he passed away in the mid 90s uh, mid to late 90s so some of these I know are 50 60 70 years old and if you add on the length of time that somebody's had them prior to that they, these could be nearly 100 years old some of these and they're still usable today but I'm not talking about all this now I'm just going to explain the stuff that I'm going to be using right I want to use a sponge right in effect I've got my sponge I've got my feathers and I've got some sign writing brushes right I'll just spin around here put all my tools down there my sign writing got some sign writing brushes now on this bath it actually doesn't really matter what you use to apply your paint if you get the effect you want so if I use a feather I'll use a feather to put grain I'll say grain it's veins I'll say the grain in the marble it's actually the veins in the marble now the skills come from knowing how to use a feather with your paints and I've got paints down here I've got some of the early acrylic um, water-based stainers from polyvine now some of these I was moving on to water-based in the early 90s some of these could be to me 30 years old I've obviously got newer ones since then but there might be some in here 30 years old oh that's a real sheepskin mitt that's if I'm doing color washing and I've got some acrylic varnishes and bits and pieces so what I'm going to be doing I'm going to be making up a bit of a, a glaze and I'll make that up from some acrylic scumble polyvine also do that I have What I do have is I've got some acrylic scumble which is the polyvine and I've got it already made up with a touch of white to it. Now this can be a cloudy background finish. So what I do is apply that, distress it and you'll see how I distress it and that starts off a base for doing a marble. Now if you remember um, from part one what I'm doing, I'm doing a fantasy black and gold marble. So a black base have white veins on it a bit of white clouding and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and I'm using that I'm going to um, babushk 
is the colour in Farron Ball. Now you can really use, as long as you've got any water-based paint, you can mix it with your scumbles and your um, acrylic bits and pieces to actually get your effect you want. So without further ado, or without further ado, I'm going to put you back on the stand, I'm going to rotate you around and I'm going to start doing a bit of marbling on this bath. Now, let's flip you around. Back with you. Now when you come to do marbling like this, it's not a rocket science thing that everything is going to be regimented and this is how you've got to do it. If you don't like it, just get a damp cloth and wipe it off, it's water based. And this is, it's a bit like a, it's like a picture. You build it up in stages and layers. If you're not happy, start again. Because there's nothing worse than looking at something and going, oh, I wish I'd have just wiped that part out and redone it. And you can do this with marbling. One of the things you've got to be thinking about with marbling is the way the veins and the pattern of the marbles are. Now, you don't get veins and patterns going in curves and circles. If you study marble, there's certain marbles that look like they've got circles and patterns in but they're actually it's the veins are moving in little jagged edges because if you think of a piece of glass if you broke a piece of glass that is how your veins and your cracks and bits and pieces on a marble can be and that's what you want to be working off i'm going to show you how i'm going to do it it's going to be a fancy marble i'm going to be softening it out so you get the depth and then once it's all dried it'll have a, a coat of it'll have a coat of varnish over it so I've got some varnishes and that's a water-based satin finish don't go for a gloss that can look a bit too overpowering you want more of a sat eggshell matte um, satin finish is ideal so let's crack on with it I'll stop you I'll get all my paints out and then we'll come back and um, get some paint on right to start off with I've just got some of that acrylic scumble. I've just got a damp cloth, and it's literally is a damp cloth. And again, I'm working out the tin, but there's not much in there. Now this scumble's like a bit like a medium. It's like a, a jelly varnish. It's a bit of a fixer. You can put paint into it and use it to extend the open time. If you don't understand that, give some comments. Extend the open time to your paint. If you're using straight out um, paints, they can dry too quickly. Using a bit of um, scumble can help you um, thin the paint slightly and all keep an open time so what I'm going to do I'm just going to wipe over this surface with a bit of scumble so the whole surface is a nice clean base to work on so I'm just wiping that over that will dry clear all the way around and then I'm working on scumble as well as the all coat exterior and the Orcoat exterior, with it being a satin finish, is really nice to work over. It's not too dry. So I'm going all the way around there. Right. Keep that going there. Oh, nearly knocked my water over. I'm going to get out now. I'm going to get out now. I've got some scumble made up with a little bit of white I'm just going to tip it into my pot there right. I'm going to get my sponge natural sponge I'm going to apply it to the surface in a random pattern you see that broken pattern you're going to say, Phil, that's that's very weak. Yes, I want it weak because it's the background. Go all the way down. Breaking it all up, moving it round. Breaking that surface up. Now, once that's on, it's very soft. I'm going to get the badger softener. I'm just going to, literally with the tips of the bristles, soften that out. And there, I don't know where you can see, it is really giving me a nice soft effect. Where you've got heavier pigment to the white, that shows up more than the places that are soft. And this is just what I'm wanting. Just circular motion, just literally tips of the bristles. 
I'm happy with that, that looks lovely. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna carry on, I'm gonna do that all the way over the bath. So I'll say, let's speed it up. Two, four, six times faster, we'll see. So I'm gonna do that now. You'll see me speed it up doing it. Back with you. I'm going to try and zoom in on that. Anyway, you can see it. it's a very distressed. Oh, there you go. It's very distressed and broken background. That's what I'm wanting. Now, again, a bit like a Bob Ross video on how to paint a landscape. You build it up. This is very soft. I want to add a bit more depth now. So I'm still going to use that white, but what I've got. I'm just going to use a bit of, um, I've got a little bit of Helmi, Helmi undercoat. So I'm going to add a bit of Helmi undercoat to that glaze. I've got my board there, my artist's board. I'm just going to open that and literally with a paintbrush, just going to, because it's white, I'm just going to dob a bit of white onto there. Now that is neat white helmy. That's going to be quite a strong powerful white. But what I'm going to do is add that again to my white pre-made scumble which I've got in there. So what I'm going to do I'm going to get let's get a bigger brush. Got a very fine sable bristle. Just gonna be scumbly white glaze with a bit. See what I'm doing? I'm mixing it, thins it down. And I'm gonna start getting a bit of a heavier pattern in certain areas. Now, for the purpose of the video, I'm gonna start here. Now, I'm right handed, so my veins aren't gonna go straight down. I'm going to do slight angle. Now if you look at some of the patterning that you can see on your smoked background, you can use that as a bit of a guide. I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. This is going to be a heavy base vein marble. I can see a bit of a pattern here forming, so I'm going to apply, it's quite hard to explain without you being here, you ought to be here. I'm going to apply the brush to the surface and as I'm applying it, I'm not just painting it down, I'm rolling it and I'm putting it on, off, on, off. And you'll see what I, see what I mean. Tip, fat, see I'm rolling it down. Now with the tip for a bit of a finer vein. Now it's ideal if you've got a little bit of a shaky hand. I'm coming up from the bottom, a bit more. Roll it round, going a bit heavier, there. Now I quite like that, it's quite heavy, I wanted a heavy vein. It's going to make sure it goes all the way under. That's it. Now again, tips of the bristles of the badger softener. Badger softener, guess what animal that comes from? Soften it with the direction of the grain and then across it. So literally, just softening out that brush mark. We're there. I'm gonna do a bit of more scumble. I'm gonna pick up on there as well, so watch. Moving my fingers, Let's put a bit of a join in it there, softening it off. Right, I don't want too many of these heavy veins because I want to 
I want to use a feather as well. So there's one. I'm going to do another one now on this corner coming round. Now this scumble glaze that's on the surface is drying off nicely. That gets reactivated when I add a little bit more water and that white paint to it. So let's try one there. Again, same sort of angle. I'm using a bit more fatter part of the brush and coming down and picking up on a bit of a smoke of that. Yeah, there. I'm lifting it for the tip of the bristle to get it finer. And I'm coming all the way around, rolling it. There, lovely. I like it. And if you can see that, I'll zoom in later, you've got heavier parts and softer parts and that's what you want. Brilliant, I love it. I love it. Right, I'm going to stop the video, I'm going to do a few more like that and then I'll come back to you so I'm not um, boring you too much. But the principle is, I've got a nice soft sign writing sable artist brush I'm putting some scumble on with a bit of white helmy and my helmy is giving me some nice veins so I'm going to do a few more of those then I'll come back to you so see you in a few minutes so here we are I've just done a few more veins on that not a lot I'm going to spin you around so you can have a look all right I did a bit around that corner which is a bit awkward to see and then I've done some on there. Now if you can see, can you see how there's some heavier parts of the white? I'll try and get in closer. Heavier parts of the white and then softer parts of the white and that gives you a bit of a depth. Now it looks heavy because I'm really zooming in on it. That's what I'm wanting because these are all bases. These are all the bases that I can work from to add more marble veins. It's around the side around there so if you can just see the smoked background you can see the the sheen of the all coat underneath and then I've got obviously the bit of a matte finish where the glaze has gone over it but these are the veins and I'll show you that's what I do let's do one so there's a bit of a made up scumble glaze with a bit of white in it and then I'm adding a bit more white to it so where do I want to put a vein I'll tell you what I'll put a vein across this middle so I'm looking where a crack could form so I'm going to go there and literally with the tip of that bristle I'm just gently putting it onto the surface and then as I roll along because this is a fat bristle these are the fat veins these aren't fine veins at the moment I'm going to over exaggerate I'm going to drop it onto the surface and rolling it can you see that's gonna be a fatter vein and then go with the tip really just bring it all the way in and I can see somewhere that could join up to it so I'm joining up no matter if you miss a little bit so you see there's another vein now what you do tips of the bristles this I'm just softening it out softening so I can keep that heavy and soft paintwork but what I'm trying to do is get rid of any noticeable brush marks so get the idea right I'm going to put you back on the stand and I'm going to get a feather out so see in a couple right what I'm going to do I'm going to get a feather out now I'm going to add some veins with a feather but instead of just adding a bit more white onto these veins, I've started to introduce a little bit of colour. Now, I have actually got some yellow, which is, if I'm doing a black and gold, I want to start introducing a little bit of soft yellow into some of these veins and around it. So, when I say a feather, if you can pick up some decent goose feathers, swan feathers, if you're at the side of a, a lake and these swans, obviously don't steal them directly off the swan or geese. geese but if you can pick them up because they've been molting, this is what you want. Now, depending on what sort of patterns you want, you can actually use some scissors. I'm not about shears that you use for paper hanging. Use some scissors and you can trim. You can actually trim those to different shapes, but I'm quite happy with that. What I'm going to do is just going to 
apart than like that. So I add that into the scumble gaze there and I just mix it together. So I'm mixing a bit of yellow with a bit of my white and my scumble varnish. I'm getting a soft yellow there just over the, can you see that, just over the tips just over the tips of the feather. Now I'm going to add that I'm going to add that now to some of these veins. Now what I'm going to do I'm not going to come down I'm going to go up slightly so I think I will come down because that might look quite good I could come up so just with the tips of that edge I'm going to follow the line of this just look, add a bit of colour to it and I can move it up and down round and round there you go that's going on really nice just highlighting some of the edges and I can pull it down on itself to add a bit of a bigger area going all the way down and that can pattern can actually break away from anything that you've done start forming a new vein like I've just done underneath there I'm loving it I'm loving it I actually wish I could do more of this because it's really really nice right I'm going to go over to this corner Let's see if I can get you over there well, there you can't right I'm going to do the similar sort of thing bringing in some colour this side I've come up from the bottom just adding it across now because of the shape of the feather I can add a real nice pattern to that which I have done right for these dry off too much just again just gently soften them back across themselves lovely that is spot on you have a bit of a free hand when it's a fantasy as long as the effects there and it looks like marble you're on a winner I'm liking this yellow actually I might not use that for a ball babushka whatever it's called right I'm going to bring up a bit now from here now if you can see there's a bit of a hollow pair, pair um, bit of a hollow area I'm going to fill that in with a bit of this yellow using the brush well using the feather as a brush to fill it all in yeah I've done that I come up from this bottom it's actually softening up a bit of the white which is good it's bringing it round loving it bringing it across like that that is I hope you can see that let's try and get you in on there that is looking really good let's just soften that out yeah I'm loving that that looks really effective right we can add a bit more so I'll make this a bit more white than yellow I'm going to come, come across this area here so if this marble was breaking just there it will then come up here so it's coming down and then I'm angling it bringing it up moving my feather all directions like that come down try and get a bit of a straighter line just the tip, just the tip of the end of the feather gets me a straighter, sharper line. I'm just turning it to feather that across. Yeah, loving it. Loving it. Right. Yeah. I'm going to bring that now down into this. Again, a bit more white. I'll bring that, join that up there. We're not making a circular pattern. We've trying to do cracks like ice, crazy paving there you go, that's nice, yeah bring that across now you can overcross your veins so if that hits, let's bring it back if that hits this vein here like it would do 
on a real piece of glass or marble it can feather into there or actually stagger like what I'm doing here and bring itself into a new vein down there loving it now because I can see a natural bit of a vein there I'm going to add another one so I'm going to bring that from there very fine bringing it in like that look at that lovely now when you do your veins try and keep them straight because veins don't go on curves right. I'm liking that I think I just want a, a vein over this corner here I want a vein coming down to there nice yellow vein I think let's bring that in from there just dropping down edge of the feather I'm going to say feather that in but I think that's probably where the, the terminology comes from very soft there that is looking lovely right I'm going to carry on with this I'm going to go around this side because you can't really see me and I'm going to do some more feathering so I'll be back with you in a, a few minutes then we'll move on to a, a finer sign writing brush right I'm back with you you can probably just tell I've done a few more veins and softened out across that bath now as I say you build it up in layers what I want to do now I want to get another probably a sable bristled sign writing brush a bit finer not so fat and I'll put some nice finer veins with a bit of texture into some of this what I've done so I'm still using that mix of a bit of a yellow you can't see it on there we've washed out a bit of a yellow with some white and I'm going to add to all this area now with marbling you can do it however you want you might want to wipe away something you might want to get a, a cotton bud or a q-tip if you're in America and wipe areas off and smudge them out you can do that you can get a newspaper put a background on distress it crumple it make your background distress that way however you can get an effect you want use it so let's get some of these veins on bit more white a bit finer and we'll soften them all out so let's pick up on some of these and let's highlight some of these again rolling the bristle of the brush round and I'm just picking up across some of these so it actually looks like it's very weak and it's not covering and that's what we want because where the edges are that will retain the colour and then where it's washing out that will show through some of the background so that's a nice heavier vein all right let's pick that up through there and I've gone over the veins look that's that's what you want to do you can go over veins I'm going to bring into that Got the shaky hand that's what you need the shaky hand tips soften it off gently don't want to lose it just gently just adding a bit more glaze to the paint so it's thin and I'm going to bring that all the way through so we'll leave it there and we'll pick it up there coming through that corner and then I'm bringing it into there I'm doing it a bit heavier Coming all the way across. You can't see that so well, right? And because I've gone heavier down there, that's given me a chance to then, let's say, spur off, spur off some of these. Bring it all in, and again, you can join up little corners. 
but it's good, I like that. Let's bring you across there. Can you see it's taking shape? It's all in layers. This is what you need to do, all in layers. This lovely brush. Let's try and get, where should we go now? Let's pick up on there. Really going to give a heavy one now, so I'm going to drop the brush so the fat part of the brush touches the surface. Not like that. Rolling it, rolling it round. I'm going to bring that all the way across there. Rolling it. See how fat it's gone? Rolling it. Now I'm going to lift it back up so it goes fine. And I'm going to bring it into this part. Bringing it in. Now so it naturally looks in, I'm just going to taper it across and just paint it in up. I like that so I'll just gently dab that across because I want to keep that effect. Loving that. If we can bring a bit more across there. I'll pick it up there and I'll bring it into there. Bringing it round. Well, I like that. So I'm going to pick up there, a bit lower down. Bring it into this corner all the way around. And it will pick up on a vein to the side of the bath. And I can see where I can just bring in a bit of a shape, just fine, tip of the bristle. I'm liking it. I'll soften those out. Yeah, love it. A little bit of a run on my brush, so swipe that down. Right, where else do we want? Let's get one round here. Picking up on there, picking up on that. All the way around. And then that will pick up into there. Yeah, picking up into there. Soften that off. I'm going to go around the corner with that, so you might just lose me. It goes around the corner and I'm picking up on the veins on this other side. All the way down, dropping down to the bottom. Yeah. Fill that in. All the way around. That's good. Then when I take you off camera, I'll bring you around this side. A bit more there. And a bit more there. Bring that into there. Yeah. I think I just want one more around this corner. Just to balance it. That's nice. It's all nice. Soften that out. Right. I don't think I'm far off on the venue. I think we probably want one going up there. Again, I'm still only using the white on to a bit of yellow. I'm going to bring that there. I'm going to go a bit heavy. 
draw a new print to that one and heavy and we're going to bring it into this bigger vein up there now the secret of learning good marbling is studying marble when I say studying marble if you're in the UK you get a chance to go around National Trust properties there's a lot of properties there that have got real marble but there's also a lot of properties that don't have the real marble and over the years hundreds of years they had the master painters master painters and decorators doing these hand finishes on certain areas that they didn't want to pay out on real marble and they could get the effect and some of them are really good and matched in and that's um, where you'll see a lot of hand painted finishes that are marble and wood grained you'll get some malachite effects if you don't know what malachite is google it that's another effect you can do tortoise shelling and then all things like that and obviously gold leaf gilding so this is all the skills as a painter and decorator I'll say you should be able to do but not everybody does because not everybody's been to college or learnt from anybody that's been teaching this because it's a bit of a dying trade but when you come to something like this it's a pleasure to do it I love doing it right so what do we think we just might want one more across there and then I've nearly done on the veins so I'm going to pick up on this vein here very fine it's got a bit of yellow on it add a bit of white and I'm going to bring it into there not to overdo it I'm doing very softly picking up on that feathering out All the way. now an advantage of using your water based over your oil based scum balls it dries quick so I can actually start adding bits and pieces to it pulling away like I'm doing now because my marble veins are dry I can see a natural vein coming there. Just underneath it. So I think I'm nearly done. What I want to do now, I'm going to mix up a bit of. Get me bigger brush out. Where's my bigger brush? I'm going to mix up a bit of white scumble again. I'm going to fill in certain areas and distress it. I'm going to show you that. Not matter if a bit of yellow in it, doesn't matter. It's a bit more glaze. Right. Right. Here, I'm going to paint that out. A bit of yellow to it. You go, what are you doing that for, Phil? Well, I'm going to show you in a minute. Fill it all in. Fill it all in. Right. Got a bit of a cloth. I watch this. Dobbing it out. Really softening that off. I wait for this. Look at that. That's depth. Now you want to pick up round that on certain other areas you're not losing your veins you're just putting a bit more cloudy smoke in around it feather it back in let's do some more areas like that Any soft, just feather it across.
a little bit more. Now, trick of the trade, when you come to varnish something like this, to get a bit more softer pattern, just put a little bit of white into your varnish, just to milk it off. You don't have to do that, but it can help. I'm quiet because I'm concentrating. Dobbing that out and then feathering it. Feathering it there. Alright. While you're talking amongst yourselves, just have a think. What would you charge for doing something like this? What would you charge? So let's have a bit of a pause. They'll probably stick an ad break in here because we've been quite a while doing it. Bit of an ad break. What would you charge for this? Have you had a think what you charge for something like this? I'll discuss it at the end. Some more smokiness around this bottom, burning it out. And I know we did something like this at the start, but well, this is your layering, giving it depth. Not that bit out. Want a bit more down here. Rushing it round. I don't know you can see where I've probably got me back to you. Scrunching it across, breaking it all up. Loving it, loving it, loving it, loving it. I'll do a bit more around this corner and we're not far off done. And again, you don't have to soften it out if you don't want. It just depends whether you can see brush marks. See, that looks quite nice without too much softening. Just adding a bit more yellow up there just to feather across. Pull it to it, there, soften that out. Liking that, I'm going a bit more white around that corner. I think 
think we're about done. So what I'm going to do, take you off camera, I'll pan you around so you can see what it's like and see what you think. Right, so here we are, around this side that you haven't really seen. Got around as far as I could, bringing it round. You can see the depth I've got on that. Again, you see the shine of the all coat because that's still shiny. And it all comes round. So, there is your masterclass in how to hand paint a marble finish bath. Let's stand back. It looks like that. Looks great. Now, back to the question. What do you charge for something like this? I've not been very long on it, but the skills. I'm looking at it now, I can just see a few bits that I want to add to and alter. But, won't take long. What would you charge for this? If I said £400? What are you thinking? £400? Or am I short? Should it be 500 I mean, 30 years ago, 20, 25, 30 years ago, we were 100, 150, 200 pounds just for a basic bath. We touched 250 back in the heyday. So what would we be now? Don't know. We're in 2022. We're looking at 300, 400, 500 quid. Not sure. You tell me. But how good does that look? So let's spin you around. So that's been about done. What I'll do, I'll finish off, I'll get it dry, I'll get it varnished, and I'll get some stills at the end of the, well, I'll say long video. I'll probably try and have split this up by the time you come to watch it, because we're um, reasonably going to be nearly an hour, aren't we? But no, thanks for listening to me. Hope this helps anybody who's looking at doing something like this. Press that bell, comment, like, do all that. And if you need any advice, please ask. But yeah, should we say 400 quid? Would you charge 400 quid for this? Have a look at the photos at the end when we're finished. So thanks for listening. Over and out. Bye bye. So there we have it. Painters and decorators, the interweb. Marbled bath. How long does it take me? Half an hour to coat up. The black base, day before, bit of prep. Couple of coats waiting for drying time. I've got marbling, what was a, a morning, if that. Waiting for that to dry, got heaters on it. And then I've got a couple of coats of varnish on. And then I've just finished off doing these chrome metallic, whatever you want to call them, feet. You see that? Just a, a rattle can of silver metallic. Taped them up and then rattle can them. So varnishing it just quickly. Polyvine satin. Two coats of that, that would be ideal, satin finish, nice. Now, if you wanted a flat finish, you could use a flat um, matte varnish. Or, back in the day, when I used to do this at college and teaching and doing on jobs, if you were using oil-based, a lovely finish for a varnish would be, you used to do your marbling, you used to put a coat of oil, varnish on, gloss, you used to wet and dry, sand it down, and then you used to finish it with beeswax and then just wiping the beeswax off and then buffing it off gave you a lovely silky finish a bit extreme i know didn't do it a lot but a bit extreme did give you a nice finish but now we're all moved on to water base so we don't need to be doing anything like that nothing worse than beeswax and the silicone spores in the air going around and landing on things then you'd have sissing so we don't want to do that let's we're moving on now water based is the future and that's what this is two coats on that and we're done so no thanks for listening to me i know this is now over probably two videos uh once i've edited it but um really pleased how it's turned out and spinning it around and showing you this is what it looks like so jobs are good and just a standard fancy black and gold marble and the gold being yellow if you can see there we can do these with greens we can do with them any colors 
that's why it's fancy you're not matching into anything so no thanks for listening to me I'll flip that around and say over and out see you on the next one